Hello, I'm Jen Janay. I'm the head of responsive innovation at Google, as Ron mentioned. So part of my job as head of responsive innovation is to ensure that Google develops and deploys AI technology that has a positive impact in the world and that it's fair and ethical once it launches. So to run you through some examples here, I'll be focusing on some of the products that Google has already launched where AI is deployed. Because some people think that AI is emerging, that it's going to solve problems in the future. So I want to show how it's already solving problems right now, both in an everyday product setting, as well as those problems that we're trying to solve at a global scale. So I'll also be covering some examples that are providing societal benefit. So here are some of the products that Google has already launched where AI is embedded. Hopefully you recognize some of the ones that you may use every day. AI allows us to scale and personalize some of these products for our users around the globe. But I'll start with a very quick intro to what is artificial intelligence that we're talking about today. So artificial intelligence, just summarizing, is how to make things smart. And the one that most people hear about is machine learning. It's a subset of AI intelligence. And essentially, it's just learning from data, ensuring that we're building on top of learnings over time. And what machine learning allows us to do is to scale things in a way that is better and more effective than trying to hard code in outcomes using inputs and data. So with that, I'll go into a couple of examples and how AI has allowed us to change our technology. So one is Google Photos. Google Photos allows you to search on topics, whether it's about, I want to see pictures of all my friends, I want to see pictures of my family, or just searching on boats. It allows us to learn from the corpus of data that we have to make it easier and more enjoyable to find pictures together. But searching on a single word is not where we wanted to stop. We want to ensure that we're able to search in a way that people talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. So an example here is a person flying a kite. We want to be able to contextualize sentences and help people engage with technology and the world around them the way that they do in their everyday life. So not just single keywords, but understanding the context of the world around them. This also means we can play with it a bit and make those experiences more enjoyable here. So doing things like color pop in a photo, or also trying to clean up those photos to make them again more accessible and useful for people in their everyday life. But helping on a more entertaining basis isn't obviously what we stop at. We want to make sure that we're helping people interact with the world around them also. So Google Translate allows people to translate words in their day-to-day -day basis. But again, single words aren't very helpful when you're trying to interact with someone in a new area or a new language. So machine learning and AI has allowed us to translate whole statements and allow people to have conversations with people that they may have just met or in situations they've never been in before. It also allows us not to just enjoy the world around us, but protect us from some of those harms. So we use AI machine learning a lot in protecting our billions of users online. Example here being spam. How do we prevent people from being affected negatively by spam and other forms of abuse every day? But many of our users aren't just end consumers. They're also businesses and partners. So how do we help them? Example here is on our image search uh, and uh, street view imagery that we're able to pull out business information to make it useful for someone on the street, but also for that business to be found. So small and medium businesses who may not have a very large online presence can be found through our existing products. Another example, the last one just for the moment, is in Gmail. Gmail has been around now for a number of years, but we recently launched Smart Compose. What this is, is based off of uh, a lot of existing text analysis that we predict uh, what people may be wanting to say to make it easier to fill in your emails and make it quicker for you to go back to interacting with the world around you. So there are just a few examples of existing products that leverage AI and machine learning to make the world a bit easier to interact with. Some of our products are a bit more helpful for all of you. 
But technology isn't just about helpfulness. We also want to make sure that we're making that available to more people, that we're essentially democratizing access to data and to machine learning generally. So how do we do that? We make our, available, we make our technology available open source to allow that research to be used by anyone. You don't have to work for Google. You don't have to have the same level of data that we may. We want to make sure that it's accessible. So two of the key ways that we do that, one is TensorFlow. It's our open source machine learning library where anyone can build uh, tools and technologies on top of it. And the second one is our cloud AI products. So this allows any business to build technology uh, on top of our existing vision, text, and um, translation. So all of these tools are available to the public, to businesses, to individuals, and researchers on our site. We want people to access this technology. We've heard earlier in the day that AI has great opportunities for usage, but we also want to make sure that it's used responsibly, that many different people can engage in this technology, so we share our learnings with the world. We don't want you to just use and build AI. We want to make sure that you're building AI that's fair and ethical, so we share those learnings with you also. From the business pr uh, perspective, that cloud at ML that I mentioned, we also provide the tools and learnings to engage with that. For example, when you learn and access our cloud auto ML, we have our machine learning fairness course there. So we want to make sure that you're understanding, is your, is your data fair? Is it inclusive of all of your users to ensure that everyone has a positive experience online? But AI also wants, we want to affect broader society. So apart from just making the technology accessible to people, we want to also solve some of humanity's largest problems. So for a couple of examples here, we worked on diabetic rhinothermia. So we want to make sure that we're identifying diabetes in people sooner and more accurate than it's ever been done before. Ron mentioned that I'm, I'm into whales. I certainly don't hunt them or track them or anything like that. Generally, I might be running away from bears. But conservation is hugely important to me. So some of the efforts that we've been doing, this one in particular, has been about whale conservation. How can we use machine learning technology to track whale uh, migration and understand where uh, there it might be issues that they're hitting and to track over time how we might improve conservation efforts? We've also been tackling human issues around flooding. We work with universities to predict uh, when earthquakes and floods may appear in order to give uh, more help when it's needed. But with this technology and trying to solve some of the largest world's problems, as I mentioned, these don't just happen. We have to make sure that we're developing technology in a very thoughtful way. So how Google has done this is by launching our Google AI principles. So these principles were aimed to identify how Google can promise that we will be thoughtful, deliberate, and ethical in our development and deployment of AI and ML. In the green, you'll see the seven AI principles that we promise to aspire to in our technology. We want to make sure that we're providing societally beneficial technology. We want to make sure, for example, that we're not creating or reinforcing bias. This involves a lot of testing of our data to ensure that it's fair. It, it requires us to test our models to make sure that they're not learning to be unfair over time, and also ensuring that we're testing with a lot of diverse users before we make our products available. And then the right-hand side, we also have a series of things that we will not do. We don't just believe it's enough to think about what do we want this technology to do? What are all the great things it could do? We also want to make sure what are the things we definitely want to avoid? What are those outcomes that we do not want to um, exacerbate with our technology? Examples here are, we are not going to build weapons technology. We're not going to build uh, platforms or technologies that will facilitate surveillance. 
We want to ensure that these principles, by making them available to the world, uh, and at the same time we made them available with our AI best practices, which are a series of more detailed instructions to also share that research and knowledge with other people. Whether you're a researcher, whether you're a business owner, how can you ensure that you're fair and ethical in your development of ML and AI technology as well? So with that, we try and think about um, what are we going to do next with Google AI? We're thinking about creating more cutting edge research and making that available to the world. We want to make sure that we're continuing to advance particular applications that we think are great for the world, whether it's in science or business or in healthcare. And then we also want to make sure that we're thinking about the human aspect of it. How do we make sure that it's usable, interesting, solving real world problems for the world? But what's needed? Obviously, data privacy is a huge issue right now. We have very stringent privacy requirements within the company, but we also want to make sure that the data is useful and accessible when needed. We also need to ensure that the right tools and infrastructure are available. Not just for us, we want to make that available to the world. Like I mentioned, TensorFlow, Cloud Auto ML, we want to make sure that businesses can also access the same computing power and models that we have access to. We believe that by facilitating technology access with more people will lead to better outcomes for everyone. And then thirdly, education and inclusion. We want to make sure that we're providing relevant education. Again, not just in the technology side of machine learning and AI, but also in that responsible side. How do you make more thoughtful decisions? How do you ensure that your product works for more people? And being able to share that more broadly. Oh. So the economic opportunity here is it's not just for individual companies. We believe that region-wise, this will have a massive impact for, uh, for, for Europe and beyond. So for example, McKinsey uh, has highlighted that AI and ML and the advanced technology can provide huge economic opportunity in the region. It's also identified that in this region, digital challengers can lead the way by providing education, building on top of this advanced technology, and making it available to more use cases will be helpful for all. And then as part of that, ensuring cooperation and research. We don't believe that we, even as a large company, can do it alone. We want to engage with other people. We want to encourage you to engage with one another, share best practices and learning, use our technologies in order to advance business opportunities, scientific opportunities, healthcare opportunities uh, in general. So thank you very much.